Right, welcome everyone. Today, you join me in the beautiful Western Pools on the Weir Pool, and we're having a fantastic day. Catching on a waggler, summing, which I thought when I fished a recent match on here was on Peg 17, flat calm like it is today, and I felt that the old bombing, bombing cord and long pole was not going to be as effective on a still day like this. What I mean by this is, when they're fishing with the bomb, another skimmer, when they're fishing with the bomb, it's a lot of noise crashing in, and they can spook fish out your peg. So what I thought is, I come down, have a little go with a waggler, show two different approaches of how to attack your peg, whether it's a pleasure session, or you're fishing in the match, and we're catching some great fish. We've had a big skimmer, now we've got another one. Just on the maggot line here, fishing two lines, but I'll explain that when we go through the setup. But I'll just unhook him. Look at that lovely little skimmer, just about a pound. So we're getting back. Now I just want to talk you through why. Get me landing out of the way. Why we've come down today and what we're looking to achieve. So I'll just take my back line back off. Just feed my peg now. Just fishing like 20 metres out with maggots. Just loose feeding. Trying to catch these fish on the bottom. It's a really cold day today. You can see. Just over there on the early number pegs, there's some cat ice. So it's been cold here last night. But going back to what I was saying, when I fished a recent match on peg 17, it was, I think it was mid December, I felt that when it was still, the waggler could be a really effective method. Now you can either feed or you can dob with it. And if you don't know what I mean by dobbing, just flicking a single hook bait round, looking for them balls of fish which are sitting in certain areas. Now on this lake, corn is a fantastic hook bait so i thought instead of fishing bomb and corn with a big heavy weight going in it can spook your fish why not fish waggler and corn it's less disturbance when the, the waggler goes into your peg so you can find them fish you can find them balls of fish and get them early in your session or your match so we're going to bait in a second but just want to touch on areas of the peg to fish now we chose to fish maggots at like 20 meters this is because that's how far I can catty them. So I've got a nice strong catapult. I'm just filling it up. 20 to 30. Maggots. Just spraying them in there. They're going in the massive areas. We can get loads of fish feeding if they want to. And that's how we're doing it that way. Now, you heard me speak about the dobbing aspect. Now, I know from past experience that on that area, it's a brilliant feature for holding fish. But there's also a, a slight dip in the lake in between say when i look at the peg now straight in front of me to the point in between peg i think it's seven and seven and eight there's a slight dip that can be a great holding spot for fish now if you chuck a bomb around there say on today we're on the lake on our own the fish might just drift off to the other side but if you're fishing with a waggler you can be a bit more stealthy you can go around your peg we can fish to the aerator if there's no one on the next peg we can fish straight in front of us into that little gap you can search the area and search different depths. Now, you may ask, what is my waggler set up? Really simple, it's probably a forgotten method in the match fishing scene, a waggler fishing on the bottom. It comes out a lot in winter time, but you don't really fish in the summer with waggler on the bottom. It's pole taken over and a lot of venues are pole dominated. So it's nice to get out and be able to use the waggler today. So enough of that chit chat, we'll go on about what gear we're using and why we've got it so the rod's just a 13 foot superior i think it is the three to ten grams it's nice and soft as you can see we've caught a skimmer there. there's a lot of silverfish. fish there's some hide in here but if we get them carp and f1s we can still get them nice nice and soft we're not going to lose them i've just got a centris 420 that's loaded with 015 reflow power now the reason why i've got such light main line is I want to be able to cast my waggler the distance. I'll speak about waggler sizes in a minute, but I really need to get to the middle of the lake. That's maybe 30 yards, 35 yards, dotting round looking for fish and I need to get there. The lighter main line I have, I can get away with, it allows me to chuck my waggler further and use lighter wagglers. Now 015 is nice and strong, we're not going to get broke, you're not going to get snapped on your main line. It's nice and robust. Also the rod will do the work so we're not you're not going to pull out, pull out a fish and lose your main, snap your main line, 
hook length, stuff like that. Now, the actual setup of the waggler is just really simple. I've just got a pellet waggler attachment, one at the top, three underneath, then the attachment. Now the float, on the adaption of the float, I, this is not my own. I won't say it's going to be, it's copied from Paul Holland's you can match focus. If you want to see how to do this attachment, check that out. It's a brilliant watch and it's an absolute brilliant way of adapting your wagglers. For this one, I've got the shot under the float, just a little ring, two weights, crimped on, and that sh float is then shotted with five number eights down the line so I can chop and change the floats to sides, but I don't have to take any of this shot off the bottom. I'm all going to have five number eights down the line. Now I've just got a 5A waggle on today because I'm chucking it away, chucking it in the middle of the lake and then I'm fishing, reeling it back to that 20 metre line from catching on maggots. As I just spoke about then, I've got some number eights down the line. This time, you might think, why have, what shot have I used? Have you used shot or stots? Now, I always speak in my fishing. When I, when I want to move the shot around, I look to use stots. They don't damage your line. They're nice and easy and they won't come make your line weak and stuff like that. You can move them around so freely. That's the advantage of them. Then I've just got a small chain swivel there. Just my hook length on. Then I've got a foot of 010 and a size 16 SFL. So it's just a really nice simple setup just to catch them fish on the bottom. But the advantages of it is, is when I want to change the depth, I can just change it. But so much ease i don't have to worry about sliding big aa shots along the line and which can cause damage you don't want that on your main line so when you get to your pegs you might ask do a fish dead depth do i come off the bottom do a fish a certain foot three or four foot well when fishing on the bottom it's important to plumb the depth correctly now if you haven't plumbed the depth correctly with a waggler before it's really simple literally set your depth do you think which is going to be six foot. So I've set this waggler to six foot at the start. And then all I've done is just popped on a two SSG shot right on my hook. This is because when this waggler lands in the water, if, if I need to put a bit more line on, I won't see the waggler. If I need to take a bit of line off, I'll see the waggler. Then you can get it really accurate. So you've got about three or four inches on the bottom, two, three, four inches on the bottom. And all you want to do is when you do that, make sure it's in the little hook in hook hook up in the rod and then mark where your depth is on the rod so for, for me today the depth is just the join of the top piece there so I know if I slide that up there put the top of the float just on the join of the top piece I'm always fishing on the bottom so like I said before when say if I wanted to fish off the bottom I can just slide it down no problem I'm not worried I can slide it back up to where I need to just chase them fish around so that's me set up you can see where I've been fishing been fishing 20 meters of maggots i'll just feed it again now just to keep it topped up so we can try and catch one just nice and aggressive get the maggots out there as far as you can that's ideal but we also had a little go earlier dobbing around on a piece of corn and some bread trying to catch some carp now we didn't have any luck with that we're just gonna have a little go again with that while we're on camera just to see if we can catch one catch a big nice carp now just put this rod down you might ask what bait we've got with us. Now you hear me speak about bread and corn. So I've just got the little punch kit. Got my bread in there to punch out. Now with, with this, because you're casting a waggler, I like to just do two punches, squeeze it together so it's nice and durable. Also we've just got some F1 corn in there. Just nice and visible in this clear water. You can see it for miles and it's really good bait on this lake in the winter time. And then we've got some maggots here, some red maggots nice and fresh so we can fire them out and they all group nicely so that's the setup that's what we're trying to do today now let's get a bit of fishing done and see if we can catch some
Right, so we've had a fantastic day of the fishing. We've been catching big skimmers, roach, odd eyed. We've had a couple of F1s, we even had some carp. So I just wanted to run you through what the best way to catch these fish is. It's died a little now, we're just getting a few gudgeon and stuff like that, small nuisance fish, but we'll still get some bites, so it's the main reason. You can see the little method and you can come down and have, have a load of fish. So just put two maggots on. Nice behind me like that, nice and soft. If ever you waggler in. Now I'm not going to sink the line, I'm just going to keep it on top for now. Feed twice with the catty, make sure it goes nice in your area. Oh, some more indication then. Let's have my bait. But we've had a fantastic day. Just proves that a waggler in the winter time can be a great little method on weir. Just having a nice day's fishing. And you can't beat it. It's not too cold today. Nice still day. Bit of cat ice on the lakes, but still had plenty of bites. Big skimmers, roach, or died, like I said. It's been fantastic. Getting a few missed bites there now. Just keep keep working it, check the bait. It's still alright. Just put my waggler down on my rest. Feed some maggots. Be ready to give it a nice firm strike. Nothing more satisfying when that float goes. Ooh, not wasn't sure on that one. When that float goes and it's a nice big silver fish or an F1 or a carp, so that's the feeling through the rod. Probably one of the best in fishing. So I'll just try and have a few more casts. Try and get one for the camera, but it's died off now. Hopefully we'll be able to nick one for you. Oh, small silver fish this one. Little roach. That's what I mean, you get loads of bites off these little fish. There we are, they're not weight builders, things you're trying to look to catch in a match, but we're just trying try to have a nice little session today, trying to catch some fish, so give it one more go, try and see if we can catch a better fish. Trying to correct the line, just make everything's not nice and straight and nice and tight. Keep that loose feed going in all the time. Bigger ropes, this one. You see, we had loads of bites. Oh, another one. We dropped in them, but another little roach there on the waggler. So, we're just going to end it there now. I'm going to carry on fishing, keep catching, but hope you enjoyed a little rundown of what you can catch on a little pleasure session or even in a match if you wanted to on the weir pool. Run through the setup areas I look to feed, how I feed them, and we've caught a few fish. So that, what more can you want from a day's fishing? So hope you enjoy this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps with the future videos and you guys enjoying the channel and you don't miss any future videos. And I'll see you on the bank soon. Cheers. Yeah.